Hey everyone, welcome back to another Web Dev Junkie video. I hope you guys are having a great day. In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up an S3 bucket and have it so it triggers a Lambda function to process some files when you upload to that bucket. So this is something that you actually can use a lot in real world applications. So for an example, let's say you wanted to run some type of virus scan over a file when someone uploads it, you can set up an S3 trigger and do that. Or another good use case is if someone wants to maybe upload a file to your backend and you need to down sample that or downscale that to multiple different resolutions to use in like thumbnails or any type of like profile pictures, you can set up an S3 trigger to process that image and scale it down. So now that we understand a couple of good use cases for setting up an S3 trigger to invoke a Lambda function, let's talk about the first and most important part of this tutorial, which is the S3 bucket we're going to be creating. So once you log in to the Amazon console, what you can do is up here, you can type in S3 and that will drop down a list of services that kind of match what you're searching for. So in our case, we want the S3 service. So if you go ahead and click on this link, that'll redirect you to the S3 dashboard. So before we start creating S3 buckets, let me just kind of explain to you what S3 is useful for. So when you have a web application, typically people need to upload files or images and you can typically store those to disk storage on your servers if you're using physical servers, but at some point you're gonna run out of disk space. So an alternative solution is to use an S3 bucket, which is basically an infinitely large storage space where you can upload files, images, whatever else that you might want, and you can download them and do other things with those images. So in this example, we want a bucket so that we can upload, for example, a text file and have that text file processed by some other service called Lambda when a user uploads a file. Also keep in mind, everything I'm gonna do in this tutorial is through this dashboard. Once you become more experienced with Amazon, you probably want to use some type of infrastructure as code tool, such as Terraform, to kind of provision these resources. All right, so the first step is, let's go ahead and click on this Create Bucket button. And what this is gonna do is take you through a wizard where you can kind of name the bucket. Um, the one thing that you need to know about the name of the bucket is that it has to be unique that means that no one else on the Amazon service can have a bucket with the same name. So what I like to do is just prefix it or suffix it with a project name or a organization name or your last name or something. So I'm going to do WDJ for Web Dev Junkie and I'll say my bucket. So this should hopefully be a unique name that no one else has grabbed. And also the region is important. I'm going to be using US East 1. If you're new to Amazon, basically... Amazon has a bunch of different regions to allow for lower latency based on where you're accessing these services. So I live on the East Coast, so I'm going to go ahead and pick the North Virginia one. So just keep that in mind, whatever region you pick for your bucket, typically you're going to have issues accessing that region using other regions. So just for this tutorial, just make everything the same uniform region of US East 1, and it'll make things a lot easier for you in this tutorial. So I'm going to go ahead and just keep the defaults. There's some other configuration you can do when you create a bucket related to security and versioning, but we're just going to keep the defaults, and I'm going to go ahead and do create bucket. So now that we've created the bucket, we are on the buckets view of our S3 service dashboard, and this shows you all the buckets that you have created. In this case, we just have one. So if I click into that bucket, we can actually inspect different things such as the properties or permissions of the bucket. But I just wanna show you how to upload a file just so you are familiar with that. So if you go to this orange upload button or down here, there's also an upload button. If you click that, so I'm gonna go ahead and click that add file button and I'm gonna select a example test file. So called test.txt. And this just has you know a couple of words in it, but we can kind of process that later on using a trigger that's going to invoke a Lambda function. So at this point, I'm going to go ahead and upload that file. You'll see a progress bar pop up at the top if your files are large. But when it's done, you'll see that everything was good. You got 100% succeeded. You can click close and that'll take you back to your bucket view. So now that the file's there, we need to do the next step of this tutorial, which is how do you invoke a Lambda function to have it process this text file when someone uploads a file? So let's go ahead and go to this top drop down and type in Lambda and we are gonna select the Lambda service here. So that'll open up a new tab, and I'm just gonna go ahead and give you an overview of what Lambda is. So if you're new to the term serverless computing, Lambda is Amazon's solution for basically running a small execution of code, and they only bill you for the time that was allocated to run that code. So this is different from actually having a physical machine that's running 24 seven. 
you're going to be charged that full amount of time if you have a physical machine. Lambda, what that allows you to do is just get charged for the time that you need to run that small um, execution of code. So hopefully that was kind of a good overview of it. I mean, there's probably a lot more I can say about Lambda. So now that we're here, what we can do is go to this create function button and we are going to create a function using a blueprint. There's a couple other options you can use when creating a Lambda function. Once you get more experienced, you can do one from scratch. But in our case, since we are kind of new, we want to use a blueprint. And when you click on use a blueprint, you can actually search for a blueprint here. So I'm going to type S3, click enter, and that'll give us the ability to choose this blueprint, which shows you how to fetch an object from S3 and do a little bit of processing on it. So I'm going to go ahead and click on this configure button in the bottom right. Now, at this point of the wizard, we need to name our Lambda function. So I'm just going to say WDJ. I'm going to say upload file processor. Um, now, the next step is you do need to create a role for this, okay? So your Lambda function, by default, doesn't have access to anything else on Amazon, okay? You can't fetch files from S3 unless you give it the correct role and permissions. So luckily for us, this blueprint will create the role with the permissions we need. So I could say WDJ, I'm just going to name it the same as this, but just put a role suffix on it. And this will attach this role to this Lambda function when we create it. Now, as you can see, the policy that's attached to that role is read only permissions. So that allows our Lambda function to read from that bucket, which we created to kind of fetch the files and process them. Now, the second part of this wizard is you want to select the bucket that we just created. In this case, I only have one but you can search for your bucket if you have multiple buckets. And we want this Lambda to be invoked anytime someone writes a file to that bucket. So I'm going to keep it as all object create events. And you can also type in like prefix and suffix if you want to kind of hone down when this trigger is invoked. But after doing all that, you will see that there is an example code snippet here, which is going to be deployed to Lambda using node version 12. And we can just go ahead and click create function and that should create that Lambda function and also set up our trigger to be invoked whenever someone uploads a file to that S3 bucket. All right, so the last step is what I'm going to show you is in this code they gave you, they gave you a little console log. I'm going to go ahead and comment that back in and I'm going to go ahead and click this deploy button. So whenever you make changes in this little code editor, you have to make sure you redeploy it so that it's actually ran. But this editor is really useful when you're kind of a beginner and you're trying to learn how to use Lambda. But as you become more experienced, you really don't use this editor at all because a lot of the times the code you're running inside Lambda is so large that this editor can't actually display it. But it's really cool to play around with when you're learning, so keep that in mind. So let's just do a quick walkthrough of this code. So whenever this Lambda is invoked, you're going to get something called an event. This event has some information about what Amazon service actually triggered the Lambda, and you'll have more information about that service that actually sent out the event. So in this case, we happen to have a trigger that's invoked by S3. So we'll have the bucket that was actually triggering this Lambda. We'll have the key of the file that was uploaded. And using those two pieces of information, we can then fetch the object from S3 using this get object function. So basically we're saying, from this bucket, grab me the file that has this key. And at this point, we can actually print out the contents of that file. In our case, we're going to add one more thing to this. I'm going to print out the body. And I'm going to console log this and say uh, body.toString. I think by default, body is a buffer. So that's why we're calling toString on it. But now that I've done that, I'm going to go ahead and click deploy for a second time. That should save our changes and deploy it out. And I want to show you how you can actually visualize or verify that this is working. So let's go back to our bucket here. I'm going to go ahead and delete this one. And I'm going to type in permanently delete. This is some type of safety measure they have so you don't accidentally delete stuff. But I'm going to go ahead and upload that same file. And hopefully we can view that that file prints out in those console logs. So let's just go ahead and select that test file. I'll click upload. Now let's go back to our Lambda function. And when you have a Lambda function, you can actually click on this monitor tab. And that allows you to see how many times your Lambda was invoked, how many errors your Lambda throws, um, how long it took that Lambda to run. You can kind of get more details of your execution if you want to, you know, dive into that. But what we're interested in seeing are the logs. So I need to click on this view logs in CloudWatch. And that'll open up 
a new service called CloudWatch, okay? So this is another Amazon service. Real quick overview, it's just a way to basically have all your services log things out so that you can view them and parse them at a later time. There's also the ability to do events and metrics if you want to set up like cron jobs on Lambdas or if you want to kind of monitor how many errors happen over a certain amount of time, you can set that up. But that's really outside the scope of this little tutorial. So now that we've clicked on view logs in CloudWatch, it actually takes us to the log group for that Lambda function, okay? Log group is another keyword. Basically every Lambda is gonna have a different log group with the name being something similar to the name that you gave the Lambda. But what we're interested in going down to is the bottom where it says log streams and you can click on the top or the latest log stream to view the logs of that recent execution. So as you can see here, if I expand these three logs, we get the event that we kind of console logged here and that gives us more information about like what we can actually grab from that S3 event. You can see here we have the object key and we also have the bucket, okay? So that's really important for being able to fetch the object. But then down here, this is kind of the important part. I printed out the body of that file. So you can see that this file has some content in it that says this is a test file. All right, so if we look at that same file inside of VS Code, you'll see that it has, this is a test file inside the contents. And that is basically what we are printing out here inside of our Lambda function. So there you have it. I showed you how to set up an S3 bucket, give it a name, and also how to set up a Lambda function to kind of register a trigger on that bucket so that whenever someone uploads a file, it's going to invoke this Lambda. And I kind of showed you how you can monitor your Lambda and view the logs of your Lambda function so that we can see how the execution worked and if we had any type of errors or exceptions that were thrown. And then you can kind of go back to the code and expand upon this to do more with the file. So for an example, going back to the use case I gave you about images and scaling them down, you can maybe import a third party library to do some image processing, run that over the image and store those scaled down images to other buckets. But that wraps this tutorial up. If you enjoyed watching this video, be sure to give me a thumbs up. Also, if you're new to this channel, be sure to click that subscribe button because I'm gonna have other videos like this in the future that should hopefully help you become a better web developer and DevOps engineer. And like always, leave a comment below if you have a favorite Amazon service or a different way that you like to deploy Lambda functions or deploy to S3, etc. All right, have a good day and thanks for watching.